So next up, we have a presentation from Advanced Materials Company, Archer Materials, with the ticker code AXE, to tell us more about Archer's 12C Qubit processor. Today, we are joined by the CEO, Mohammed Shakir. Hello, Mohammed. Hi, Jane. How's it going? Beautiful audio test. Can you all hear me? Yes, you're perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm very pleased to be addressing you today. Um, uh, I would... I would like to introduce you today to the global scale of opportunity that our technology represents. Uh, and, and as Jane is loading up our um, uh, presentation here. Um, so I, I wanted to start by saying that um, I wanted to introduce you to the global scale of opportunity that our technology represents and really to give you an overview of the wonderful work that Archer is doing in this domain and you know really the way we're going about doing this work um, and and also um, the, the the excitement I think it's generating and why as a consequence of all this uh, Archer is, is worth your attention and your consideration the images in this presentation are ours right so the people that you see are people that uh, work at Archer work with Archer the, the facilities that we operate are from so for example this image we have Archer staff in you know, $150 million research and prototype foundry that we operate from. Um, and, and really our strategy at Archer involves building advanced semiconductor devices. So it's important, you know, to acknowledge the industry that we operate in, the semiconductor industry, and to put our work into context. Uh, the semiconductor industry is one of the largest industries in the world. And, you know, one of the most important uh, and the long-term outlook you know, for this industry is quite positive. You know, despite its recent supply chain challenges that have emerged, um, you know, ironically, these really further illustrate and highlight the industry's importance. And if there's, you know, one thing I want you to walk away with today, it is that we are one of very few companies in the world building a quantum computing chip and the only one listed on the ASX doing so. At Archer, we have a focus on a few key areas to generate value. And this involves technology development, really at the cutting edge, uh, IP prosecution, and partnerships with other global players, both small and large. But it's you know, really important to make a distinction here that we're not just a company working solely on developing a quantum computing chip. We are a semiconductor company building a number of high impact technologies. But Today, in the interest of time, I will focus my talk on our flagship quantum computing technology, our 12CQ chip. So this is some publicly available information. It's a quick uh, snapshot of the company and shows, you know, really that we're sharply focused and, and have no corporate debt. All this information can be found online. And really with that focus, uh, you know, what that means is that we have a clear strategy that we've been executing over the last few years. You know, our growth is not a result of, of overnight success. It's a result of the quality of work we are doing, the quality of people at Archer, and the quality of the organizations that we work with. So let's go for it, right? I mean, quantum computing, what's it all about? You know, why is it so disruptive? Why is it so revolutionary? I mean, is it really believable? The first question to answer is, how is quantum computing different to modern day computing? Well, it's a whole new way of computing. It requires a new set of skills and new technology. And this new way of computing requires a critical piece of technology, a device called a qubit processor. It's a quantum chip. We'll refer to it as a quantum chip. And technologically at Archer, we do have a unique value proposition that holds up as a world first. And it's that our qubit processor could allow for quantum computation at room temperature on board modern devices. This qubit processor is currently under development. It is a world first. And this for quantum computing is an astounding proposition and one that we can back up with many years of R&D. And yes, we started building our technology. It's not pie in the sky, right? A lot of work has gone into this technology. And you know, as you can imagine, given what, given, you know, what we're dealing with, it is very highly complex. So I'll try and simplify it um, by saying that you know, Archer's objective is to build a quantum computing chip that could function at normal conditions on board modern day devices. It's a challenge, but we're on the way to achieving this. And it's you know, really absolutely exciting to be in this position. 
But in saying that, we're not actually doing this for fun, right? I mean, there's, there's a big demand for this technology once it's available. And there is a demonstrated commitment by the biggest economies in the world that it's going to happen, right? And what's important is at Archer, we aren't playing catch up. And with this really leads me into an overview of, of Archer's 12C qubit processor chip technology. We have the key ingredients to be successful in the computing industry, the technology and the human capital. The critical point on this slide is the last bullet point. And as I said, in quantum computing, this is an astounding proposition. In your modern day computing, not so much. It works at room temperature. It works at practical conditions. But I just want to be able to you know, illustrate this proposition. So Jane, just the next slide. So I really wanted to illustrate this proposition. I mean, it, this, this slide here is the most important slide of my presentation because this is the technology value proposition at the core of our commercial opportunity that our technology could potentially enable the widespread use of quantum computing powered devices. And I'm sure that you would agree that this is a competitive advantage that's worth protecting and this is a technology that's worth developing. Now, but what do I mean by could potentially enable widespread use of quantum computing powered devices? Look, it's, it's, it's an open secret that quantum computing would give nations, right, a competitive advantage because it would, you know, it would really address all sectors dependent on computational power, this ever increasing need for computational power. Each of these sectors that are shown here could benefit tremendously with the advent of advanced computing, like quantum computing, and especially in quantum powered mobile devices or QPMDs. Look, and there are real uses for quantum computing. It's already happening, right? However, it is currently limited in scope. But Look, in the last five years, quantum computing has seen an extraordinary growth in, in its applications and potential applications. Uh, the key for Archer at this early stage, indeed in the early stage of the entire industry, um, not just in the early stage of our development, is in really positioning our technology where there are clear benefits for mobile use. And it's really exciting to think that, you know, when we consider the roadmaps of, of IBM and, and other uh, large organizations, you know, where the industry will be in the years ahead. So look, much of the technicality, technicalities of quantum computing are really beyond the scope of this presentation. Um, but um, if Jane, you just go to the next slide, I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure you have questions relating to the technology and, and the specifics, but look, I, I'm sure there'll be opportunities in the future to discuss this with, with our team. Um, the important thing to note here is, um, you know, to unlock all this value in, in, in quantum computing and what it promises at, at its technology maturity, it's exactly that. The technology hardware needs to mature and therefore needs to be developed, right? Um, so it's important to let you know who is leading our development. It's important because as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's a complex business. This technology is not easily understood and it requires people with a particular set of skills. And I'm, I'm proud to say that that we have those people at Archer. But for some of you, you know, you may be wondering, I mean, if you're coming across Archer for the first time, you may be wondering, well, you know, Archer is a small outfit, you know, how can we do it? How can we compete? Uh, look, the reality is we're, we're not doing it by ourselves, right? We're, we're already in partnership with an undoubted world leader in, in computing, Big Balloon, IBM. Uh, our partnership with IBM is unique. We are the first Australian company building a quantum computing processor to join the invite only global IBM quantum network. This quantum network is made up of 130 constituents, you know, Fortune 500 companies, startups, national research facilities. It's absolutely incredible. Um, but our focus is on, is on building the chip and working with IBM to demonstrate it works. And I, and I just wanna make it clear that we're not trying to build the entire computer. Um, and this is because a question I'm frequently asked is, you know, what does a quantum computer look like for the user? Um, you know, this slide, you know, really anti, in an anti-climax way illustrates, you know, what we see when we access real quantum computers at IBM. I mean, the principal point, you know, here is that, you know, we just want to show you that a quantum computing is real. You know, and, and, and IP is important. It really is. And, and it's fantastic to have, uh, you know, patterns related to the 12CQ chip granted this year in Japan, Korea, and China. And, 
you know, real powerhouse Asian economies, absolutely wonderful. And we, we have patent applications uh, progressing in the US, uh, Australia, Europe, and Hong Kong. So look, I encourage you all to read our patents, the specifications really uh, to go through them, uh, really to fully grasp the, the broad nature and, and the global competitive advantage that Archer holds. It, it really is difficult to erode. We are protecting a new technology, a quantum computing chip. And this is a paradigm shift in computing. You know, look, in order for Archer to participate in the global semiconductor industry, we must have patent protection in the largest economies in the world. We must protect our commercial interests that allow us to really exploit the technology over the longer term. And patents are one way that allows us to do that. And it's really important to note before we move on to the next slide that you know, we are one of very few companies. Now, Archer is one of few companies in the world in the semiconductor industry with a patent portfolio protecting quantum computing chip technology. So I, I hope that I've painted a good picture of what we do as a, a high tech semiconductor company in Australia. And look, just in conclusion, I guess, you know, some questions you may have, are, you know, where are you at now? Have you made one of these things yet? Uh, how far away are you from making one of these devices? Look, what I will say is that Archer is, is building itself into a semiconductor company. And, and this is our strategy now and going forward. We have set commercial roadmaps for our technologies, and we are at the point of where we need to be. So there's a lot to look forward to at Archer in the year ahead. And, and I think, you know, what you'll see is, you know, if you look back at our announcements and, you know, what, what I think you'll see is a, a track record of high impact outcomes. And outcomes are not based on a, on a single metric, which is typical of other industries. So look, I, I hope today that I've, convey, I've conveyed to you some of the, the excitement of, of what we're doing and, and really how eminently worthwhile it is. And, and now on that note, thank you very much for your attention and, and happy to take questions, Jack. Well, Mohammed, is always great presentation. We've had quite a few actually come through, so I'm trying to combine them into, into one. So, so what are the applications of quantum computing? That, that's a good question. I mean, look, we have to put things into context, right? Um, quantum computing has made a lot of strides in the last decade. It, it's absolutely been wonderful to see. And it still is in the early stages of development. And, and broad commercial applications are still years away. I just want to make that clear, right? But generally speaking, I think a consensus is emerging in, in the quantum computing economy, um, you know, around applications of quantum computing at tech maturity. And I think what's happened is now that there are you know, four principal computational problems, um, and I'm going to dive straight in here, right, where, where quantum machines, I'll call them machines, could be uh, beneficial. And, and these four problems you know, amazingly lead to hundreds of business use cases that are really envisioned to unlock value for end users in the coming decades, right, as the hardware matures. And, and these four problems involve, bear with me, there's some jargon here, right, but I'll try and unpack it, all right? So there's simulation, optimization, machine learning is probably a term that people have used, um, and cryptography. Um, you know, in areas like simulation, you would have seen one of my slides. There was a whole heap of publications already out there, hundreds of publications, um, you know, around these kinds of four areas. Simulation, major potential in, in drug discovery, um, in, in battery design, fluid dynamics, in, in the financial services sector, around derivatives and pricing of options. You, you'll see a lot of large organizations now very publicly coming out saying that they're performing experiments with quantum computers uh, within their business units. Um, another area is around optimization, and this may not mean a lot to anyone right now, but optimization really is embedded in, in current technology. You know, when you think about route logistics and portfolio risk management, um, you know, machine learning, I don't have to go on about this, and, and cryptography, obviously, with enabling, you know, stronger encryption standards. You can see that, um, and I do emphasize at maturity, um, you know, quantum computers have the potential to really impact almost every sector that's dependent on an increase in computational power. So it, it is broad um, and, and the, the examples are quite interesting. We, we did um, share with our shareholders through our newsletter and I, I do recommend um, if you're listening today to sign up to our newsletter. We did it, um, you know, share an interesting report by the Boston Consulting Group recently that does cover many of these areas and goes deeper into these areas. So I, I do recommend uh, visiting our website and, and looking that up. 
Thanks, Mohammed. There's been quite a few just on the team. So yeah. um, a lot of people are asking about how many employees and contractors does Archer have and, and who's going to be manufacturing the solution? Yeah, look, that's a good question. We get it all the time. People are interested in who works with us. Um, you know, I'll, I'll use a, a quote that, that some people tend to use out in the media and, and, and in online uh, and out there. That's we, we have a handful of people. Um, and, you know, to say that, but you know, the handful of people that we have are the best in the business. Uh, you, you, you can certainly uh, cut it in a big league um, with the kinds of people that work at Archer and with Archer. And we are looking to grow the team and we're looking to grow the team in tandem with the development of our technology. Um, and it's absolutely exciting. I mean, we have people at Archer, they're really pioneers in their field. I mean, you're talking about people like Martin Fuchsler who, you know, came up with the single atom transistor. Um, I'm not gonna toot my own horn, um, but you know, you can have a look at you know the kind of impressive uh, history and, and experience that you know people have brought to Archer. We've been able to retain and really start to attract um, some some wonderful people to to join our company. So um, I hope that's answered your question, Jane. Perfect. And just quickly for our last one, uh, so what news flow can shareholders expect over the coming months? Yeah, look, I mean, we, we've had a, a very clear kind of three-pronged approach, um, you know, around commercial development, technology development, and a prosecution of our intellectual property. And I think, you know, moving forward, the, the, the things that we, we report and, and um, keep our shareholders informed of is it's definitely around our technological uh, developments and our advances there and our progress. It is a world first. It is absolutely exciting. Um, and, and I'm... I'm very happy that many of our shareholders have had a chance to come around and, and look at the facilities where we work and, and meet the people we work with. You know, the dozens of, of engineers, semiconductor foundry engineers, physicists, theoreticians, chemists, biologists, um, absolutely wonderful the people that we work with in Australia and around the world. Um, and, and also around our commercial development, right? Um, you know, we're working with some amazing companies in the quantum computing industry, you know, companies like uh, Max Kelson, who are also part of the IBM Quantum Network, where we're building, you know, and, and we're working on developing really cutting edge um, uh, quantum algorithms and, and um, you know, working with KISS-Kit, the software development kit or IBM. It, it's absolutely wonderful and, and uh, really gets me out of bed in the morning and, and um, keen and eager to, to communicate this to, to everybody over the next uh, six to 12 months. Well, Mohammed, as always, thank you for joining us. I think last time you were on the on broker briefing, the share price was circa 20 cents. So for any of the webinar attendees that joined up then, they'll be very happy. <laughs> well, thanks very much for having us, Jane.